Hi, welcome to A Web of Stories. My name is Melinda, and today I'm going to do sort of a review slash discussion of the book Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. Now, I realize that I can't really talk about this without spoiling, so I'm going to do kind of like a non-spoilery review and as much as I can talk about it without spoilers. And then I will go into spoilers, but I'll make sure to put a little thing up that says spoilers. So if you haven't read this book um, and you don't want to be spoiled, you know to click the video off at that point. So, Hello Beautiful by Anna Napolitano um, came out recently. I don't have the um, release date, but it was very recent. It's actually um, the, it's not the current Oprah Book Club, but it's the one before this, which happens to have been her 100th book or her book club. If that means anything to you, it actually doesn't mean anything to me. That's just interesting. Um, so, first of all, there is the confusion on whether or not this is a retelling of Little Women. First of all, I would say it's not a retelling. At most, you can say is it's an homage. The next question is whether or not it was intentional. Um, and the reason that's a question is because the marketing makes it sound very much like it is, but I have heard interviews from the author to make it sound like it very much is not. Um, after reading the book, I don't see how it could not have been intentional. Um, my guess is that the comments that the author made where she said, I wrote this book and then people read it and they pointed out how much it was like Little Women. My guess is that those readers were early readers and maybe that information was taken and maybe it was given by, pub, you know, the publisher or whatever to go ahead and really be intentional about that Little Women connection. So I will say if you like Little Women, you will find this book very interesting. Um, if you don't care about Little Women, you'll probably still find this book interesting. The writing is gorgeous. The writing is absolutely beautiful. And I really kind of like was thinking about, who, this reminds me of someone and I could not figure out for the longest time who it was. And I may be off on this because I haven't gone and picked up one of these authors books to compare it. And I haven't read this author in a while, but the author that popped into my head was Madeline Langle. There's something about that that put me, uh, Napolitano's writing that put me in the mind of Madeline Langle. The setup of this story is that there are four sisters. The oldest is Julia, and then there is Cecilia, and then there are two twins. Their names are Emmeline and Cecilia. No, Julia Sylvie is the second oldest, and then Emmeline and Cecilia. Um, the book really centers around Julia and Sylvie. Emmeline and Cecilia are there. They are part of the story the entire time, but really the center part of the book is about Julia and Sylvie. And this is all about family love and sisters and all this. Julia is very much, each each girl has, each girl, each sister has her um, her personality. Uh, Julia is the oldest. She's a take charge, make your life the way it is. Sylvie is the romantic. Um, this is not a spoiler, but they talk about how when she's young and she's working at the local library, she makes out with boys in the stacks to practice for when she meets her soulmate. And then you have um, Emmeline, who is, she's the homebody. She wants to parent and take care of people. And then there's Cecilia, who is the artist. And yes, you can kind of sort of map that onto Little Women, but don't go too far with that, because that's not the point. So um, there is also a, a, a young man named William in the story. William is uh, Julia's boyfriend and then husband, and that's, and from there, that's kind of where the story takes off. Things happen um, and it causes a breakdown in the family and Julia basically leaves the family. Um, and so the rest of the book is how does this family deal with the very complicated racial relationships that now exist between them by the fact that Julia is gone and all this. I should also mention, I should have mentioned this. There is a mother and a father. The father dies very early on, um, not a spoiler but he's very much a presence in this book, even though he's not there. And the mother, of course, if you're gonna say this is a retelling or homage to Little Women, you have to compare it to Marmy. Um, I will say this, um, she's not, I mean, Marmy is much more likable in that she's nicer, but Rose, who is the mother, is much more entertaining and she's not always likable. <laughs> There's, she's, she's quite a character herself. Um, I really enjoyed how just the really Napolitano goes deep into these relationships and really shows how all the characters kind of 
wrestle with these dilemmas that they're in. Um, I also felt that the relationship with sisters, I don't have a sister, I have brothers, but they are all much older than I am. So I was pretty much raised as an only child, um, even though I have five brothers. <laughs> um, that sibling relationship seemed very realistic to me. And it seemed like something that I would want. It made me very happy that I have two children and not one so that they can have that relationship, even though currently they frequently try to annoy each other to death. So I did have a few issues with this book. One is that, and this is where I'm going to have to be very vague. There's a situation that happens that I found very uncomfortable to read. However, the intent of that was to make you uncomfortable. So I cannot say that it is a flaw of the book. In fact, I would have to give it kudos because it did make the reader feel the discomfort that the characters feel. Um, but if you're going in looking for a warm, fuzzy book, you may not find that here. Um, and there were times that I felt the dialogue was a little like, hmm, are people really talk like that? Really? Really? Is that realistic? It wasn't a big deal, but every once in a while I noticed that. Um, I, uh, my biggest issue was with something that happened, again, being very non-spoilery here, there's something that happens that basically strips two of the characters of any kind of agency. Um, and I, that was the thing that I had an actual problem with, I will say. Um, I kind of understand that they needed something to happen to make the book to work, but it kind of bothered me because it's something that I don't believe is very realistic. I also don't like to see characters who have had such agency all of a sudden not have agency. Um, so, but all in all, I did do Caw Pile on this one because, as I said, there were a lot of things going on, and I wanted to be really fair about my rating on this. Um, and it came up with four stars, which is an A, and I think it, this is an A book. Wouldn't quite say it's an A plus for me, um, but an A, definitely. And I would recommend it, especially if you are interested in uh, seeing some kind of homage or somehow how someone kind of is influenced by Little Women. I don't want to take it any farther than to say that the author was influenced by that work because I don't know. There's too many conflicting messages about that. My cat is over there making noise. I'm sorry about that. Now I'm going to go into the spoiler section where I'm going to elaborate on some things that I just said, but I will be spoiling the book. So if you have not read the book, I would turn the video off here. Thank you for watching, giving me a thumbs up, subscribe, you know, the usual things I see at the end. I will see you in the next video. Editing Melinda, before we go to spoilers, there's a very important thing I forgot to mention, is that there is a very large mental health component to this story. There is a character who is clinically depressed, um, and Napolitano goes through the whole process of him basically having a breakdown. Him. Okay, it's him. It's William. Sorry. <laughs> that might be Myler's spoiler. I think that's actually in the synopsis. So, um, it's not a spoiler because I think it's in the synopsis, but goes through the whole thing of him having this, having this breakdown, being where he is and finding his way up and how he deals with it for the rest of his life. And because of that, I am choosing to include this book uh, for my mental health may read along and I will put it forward for that. I will tag the uh, Kim uh, who and the other, oh gosh, I'm sorry. Marianne. There you go. The people who are running the, the Mental Health May read along below if you are interested in more books, fiction and nonfiction, that have to do with mental health. And now, on to the spoilers. <laughs> but if you're with me, now I am going to spoil the book. Um, I would hope that you've read this book so I can get your thoughts on these sorts of things. But here we go. So when I talked about spoiler, 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 <laughs> the difficult situation. What I meant was the relationship between Sylvie and William. So Julia, Julia is a character who has agency coming out of her pores. She makes deliberate decisions. She chose William as her boyfriend. She chose to William to marry William. She chose to have a child who is Alice, all these things. When William basically leaves her letter and says, I'm out of here, here's some money, sorry. Um, she chooses right then, it's over, I'm not putting up with this. Um, but then you have, on the other hand, Sylvie, who kind of steps in and plays this, the role of the spouse with William as he's in the mental hospital after, oh, I should have added that before. <laughs> I should have added that part before in my first part, because this is for Mental Health May. I'll do an addendum at the end. <laughs> um, hello, my daughter just came in too. Uh, that sort of thing, like they just, they were just magically in love and 
they, they could not stay away from each other. They had no choice in the matter. And this idea of having no choice, I have a big problem with. Um, I'm not aromantic. I'm not saying that you just consciously make a choice to love someone. I do understand that there's lots of things with this, but I also don't believe that once you are in love, um, you have lost all ability of your own act. Oh, all control over your own actions. Um, the truth is that these characters made a choice to be together. They, in the book is written as if they did not. And that was my biggest sticking point with this book. Um, I also didn't quite understand. I mean, I understood, but I didn't buy what Sylvie saw in William, that he saw her and she saw him. And I'm like, this is a man who is severely clinically depressed to the point that he is about to attempt to decide suicide and ends up in a mental hospital and ends up spending the rest of his life highly medicated. He, the ability, the fact that you can look into his eyes and he looks at you, you see, no, I don't buy that at that point because I don't think that the character is capable of doing that. So there was that. That was my biggest issue with the book. Um, the other, now I was really kind of struggling with, with Julia and her decision to tell Alice when Alice was five that her father had died. Um, first of all, I think that's a very not appropriate conversation for a five-year-old who actually had not really been asking about her father. It, it was a conversation that Julia brought on herself. But I mean, the point, the way I kind of look at it is it was not a wise decision on Julia's part to tell, it was a really not wise to do it when Alice was five, but the decision to tell her daughter at some point that her father's dead was, yeah, not wise, but it was a completely understandable point of view, a, a, an um, understandable action if you look at it from Julia's point of view and the kind of character she was, because she is a very well-drawn character. So again, I, there are things I struggled with, but I ultimately made peace with it. The other thing that um, I wish I had, I wish this book had, was that, um, I wish that Emmeline and Cecilia were more tied into the central story. They're always the characters who are just sort of there kind of on the outside. And they had really interesting stories. Um, I wish we'd gotten more of that. Although this book was fairly long and I don't think that it was bloated. I think it was as long as it needed to be to tell the story that it did. So I'm sure that if uh, Napolitano had really kind of gone into Emmeline and Cecilia's story, this would have been a mammoth. <laughs> I, I recognize that, but those are my issues with the book. Um, I would love, if you have read this book, I would love to hear your feelings, especially on how you felt, felt about the relationship with uh, Sylvie and William. And did you feel as I did that they sort of, Napolitano took their agency away, which made that whole thing a little less believable. I would have believed it more if Sylvie just said, this is a decision I'm making. And William had been in a mind where he could make that sort of decision, which I also don't believe he was made that decision and they recognized that that was a decision and yes they did have a choice and not this we didn't have a choice we had to do it sort of thing which i don't have a lot of patience for so anyway please let me know what your thoughts on this book were um thank you for staying through um and if you are someone who has not read the book but stayed through the spoiler section after hearing the whole video are you interested in reading the book or not i'm, I'm curious um as i said i would recommend it if this sounds like something that works that would work well for you um, but it's also the kind of book that I think that if you kind of listen to the synopsis and you go, eh, then maybe it's not a book for you. And that's fine. I think a lot of books fall in that category. So anyway, thank you. Go ahead, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next video.